Arizona Coyotes just keep winning games. They just keep winning. And at this point, we have nothing left to do but accept it. Thank you all so much for tuning in to the PHNX Coyotes postgame show. Brought to you by the one and only DraftKings Sportsbook app, America's top-rated sportsbook app. Don't forget to hit that like button. Subscribe wherever you get your podcasts and leave us a five-star review. I'm Leah here with PD, Sean behind the Mac. For a lot of you here in the chat, long time no see. Craig will be calling in for mullet shortly, but PD. Coyotes win again. Points in seven straight. <laughs> a few weeks ago, they had points in nine straight. 3-2 win against a Vancouver team that was just as hot as the Coyotes were, and the Coyotes were better. I, I, they were the better team tonight. I know the, the big difference tonight is going to be the power play and, and Vancouver's ability to score on the power play and, and the Coyotes' um, penalty kill, which was absolutely perfect tonight, which which was the difference. This was a fun night. Like, it was a fun experience, and I don't know if, if there's people here that were listening in to the, the watch. I don't know if it's not watch a watch along. party, watch along. It wasn't a party. Well, that was so fun. That was so we much fun. We had so much fun on the watch along. Yeah. I was I was concerned about it. I was nervous. It was, it was so great. much fun. I so hope if, if you weren't there and if you maybe... And all the pretties. Christ, Christina missed it. Yeah. And also, I know a lot of you were at the game too, so it made it hard. And now you're listening to our post-game show in your car. But next time, we're going to try and do one for a road, road game. Because we had a blast. It was a lot of fun. Um, we were doing live PD's Puck Talks. Yep. So a lot of the game breakdown, we're going to kind of summarize it here in a, with a bow. But if you want to go... Like really get the nitty gritty. Go back and watch the watch along after we also had Paul Bissonette call Paul in. Called in to start the show. Yeah. In bed in Atlanta. In Atlanta. Like so, come on. Lot, lots of Fire. lots of fun stuff on that. So, um, but let's do kind of an overarching view. Craig's already walking up, by the way. Oh, because we we, a we started a little late, little but late. let's get into the numbers. Um, Coyotes. Vancouver barely outshot the Coyotes for ones. It felt like um, 31, 27 were the shots in favor of Vancouver. For me, two biggest things here. Vancouver 0 for 5 on their power play. It felt like they were just constantly on the power play. That was kind of a downfall of the Coyotes, but you got to give credit to their PK. They were on fire. And then you go to their power play, and the Coyotes were 2 for 3. So the Coyotes special teams really got it done tonight, and that was the difference maker. And that's why in a close shot game, a one-goal game, the edge was in favor of the Arizona Coyotes tonight. Yeah, and this one's interesting because you took look at the shots on goal and through two periods, the Coyotes outshot Vancouver. And it happens a lot when you've got a lead like that, especially in the third period where you're you're trying to hang on. You're trying to be more responsible, more cautious. Therefore, you take less shots. And Vancouver is really pressing. So it's not surprising to see them outshoot um, the Coyotes in the third period. But it is absolutely 100% about the power play. And even when, when Vancouver got really good looks, you, they'd ring it off the post, they'd shoot it over high, or Prozvatov would make the save. I, penalty kill did the job. I think they kept the puck out of Pedersen's hands as much as they could um, while they were k- killing penalties, and I think that's the key to killing Vancouver's power play. Um, that's the difference. I mean, they, 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 keeping them off the board five times, they have they can't continue to to do that though, they got they got to stay out of the penalty box. You can't take that many penalties against a team that has a power play as skilled as that. So, I thought the Coyotes skated really well. I thought through thirty minutes or forty, well, how many is in a game? Sixty? So that'd be fifty. <laughs> I'm tired. That's a lot of talking. Through fifty minutes of this game, I thought they were the better team. I thought the last ten minutes, Vancouver really put on a, a late push, and I thought they were the better team. But that was just the last ten minutes. The Coyotes earned it again, and and that's points in seven straight now. Absolutely. Well. We're off. We're completely off Off our pattern tonight. But why not? Why not bring him in early? Let's bring in Craig from Mullet. Craig, what's what's up, up, guys? Oh, I got like this weird little glow going on here. I love it. Why not? You know what day tomorrow is, Craig? (laughs) No, I have no idea what day tomorrow is. I've lost count. I'm too tired. Anyone got plans tomorrow? I think I'm just going to stay in. Maybe he's postponing. Maybe he does a week. Guys, I'm glad you had me join tonight, though, because with all the big news, there was something really important that I did want to discuss, and that's that I'm having a St. Patty's Day party tomorrow. <laughs> Petey's done. Petey's leaving. He's had enough. <laughs> Alrighty. Well, Craig, Petey and I have been talking for three straight hours, so I'm going to pass it to you yeah. for your thoughts on yeah, this game. Yeah, your turn. Your turn. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to call in. Oh, wait, I'm busy. Wait, I'm going to call in. No, I'm busy again. <laughs> Can I ask how the telethon's going? 
the telethon. Seriously, we should do a telethon version. Raise well, money. I raised a lot of money for myself on the DraftKings Sportsbook app, America's <laughs> number one rated sportsbook. I had four for five on mine. Let's go. So, so you had Biz on. Yep. yep. Give me some of the other highlights. Um, Nash Bingo kind of fell flat because yeah. I think he was too aware and too cautious. Oh, he no. he gave us a nice little pregame from the, between the benches. He filmed a little bingo spot for us in sentence. We had that on the show. Um, but that wasn't... He, he didn't use as much of his Nashisms as he normally does. So that, that we didn't get... We'll use it again in another game. I, I think we had three or four PD Puck Talks. Oh, Puck Talks? Yeah, three or four. We had three or four live PD Puck Talks, which was... Wow. I, I think I was entertaining and educational. Yeah, we had AJ and Rudo in the chat. Yeah. Um, the chat helped us come up with the thumbnail. It was it was a really fun. It was time. fun. It was a, honestly it was a lot of fun watching a hockey game like this. I can't wait to do it again. So about this hockey game. Yeah, your turn. Let us rest our voices, Craig. That's you nineteen can... wins now on home ice. Unreal, buddy. They won't be practicing again tomorrow. Uh, Seriously? I, I literally asked Andre in the post game scrum with tons of reporters around. Do you think it will be difficult to ever convince your players of the importance of practice again? <laughs> What did like, he say? He first he laughed and he said, "No, that won't be a problem for me." <laughs> but they don't practice anymore and they just keep winning. This is 19 wins on home ice now. They have how many more? Eight more games here? Eight more games on home ice, guys. We know they passed the Canucks tonight. I mean, they're they're right even with the Canucks and Flyers now. But I mean, might as well shoot higher. I'm I'm I got the uh, Red Wings and the Ottawa Senators in the crosshairs. It would be insane if they ended up with a better record than the Ottawa Senators after the Jacob Chicken trade. Ottawa is plummeting. This is, there's a seven-point difference between Ottawa and Arizona right now. Which is a hell of a lot closer than they are to the bottom of the standings. Oh, right? my God. It, it, it is, it's, a, it's amazing what this team is doing. And, we, and not just for a team that was trying to be towards the bottom – to get in the Bedard sweepstakes, but this is a team that traded away all of their assets at the trade deadline. This is a team that's full, and I mean full, of guys from Tucson. And and the starting goalie tonight is a Tucson road runner with one NHL win underneath his belt. And they still win. They it's it's abs Schmaltz, one of their their leading goal scorers over the last several seasons, out of the lineup. And they still win. It's it's it's. I'd hate to say a team of destiny that doesn't make the playoffs. So it, that's maybe a little overreach. They'd be a team of destiny if they did this and then won the draft lottery. Yes. 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 So let's think the hockey gods. Like they, this team deserves it. So let's go. Where where is the the breaking point though? Is it eleventh? Where can you can't jump up how many spots, Craig? Is it eleven spots? It's, you can't yeah. jump up ten spots. So you can't finish any. Yeah, you can't finish any higher than 11th otherwise. So they need control. to just pump the brakes right, just yeah. a little bit? Yeah, they got Chicago coming in. Like Detroit and Ottawa next. They caught Vancouver and St. Louis tonight. So yeah, St. Louis, that's right. Where's, well, they're past Philadelphia, that's right. They caught St. Louis. Oh, they're past Detroit. Philadelphia. Blew them. They're four yeah. points past how, the Flyers. How, how close are they to Detroit now? They're, they're still, they still have six points. Six points to Vancouver, this seven to Ottawa. This conversation is depressing me. Can we talk about something else? With eight games at home still. Okay. They're, they're easily catching Detroit. Can we forget okay. about And guess this? who's next on that list? The wagon that is northern New York, the Buffalo <laughs> Sabres. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wow. That is, we that is, in? That is western New York. Western? I do not live in New York. We're not saying northern? No, 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 no. Okay, I'm sorry. No, no, no. It wasn't York. intentional. It was Can we talk that. about something else? Yeah. They, I don't they like played this. well. They played really well what, today. What? I still wish they shot wait, the puck more. What should we call the region that is Buffalo? Should we just say Canada? Buffalo is western New York. Syracuse is central New York. The no man's land that is like the trees in the north is northern New York. And there's like the Hudson Valley capital region near Albany. I'll just say not New York State. State. Can I do that? Charles, that was rude. Okay. Okay. Kind of Canada. Okay. Okay. We're going to forget it. We're going to forget about. We're going to forget about what the win means and just talk about the win. Okay. Yeah. Great. Um, Travis Boyd. Boyd Boy, howdy. howdy. Holy moly. His 13th and 14th of the season. He was way slower this season. I didn't think he'd come anywhere close to what he did last season, um, but he is just unreal. Um, he now has three, has a three game point streak. 
just crazy that second goal it was like it looked like it was trying to be a pass but it skirted between the five hole of the Vancouver Canucks goalie but Travis Boyd what a what a night for him yeah, one of those guys that's having a lot of fun right now. But it seems like the entire locker room is having fun right now. It's just, we, we literally, like, I, I got in front of Lawson Krause and Travis Boyd, and we were looking at each other, and Krause looks at me and goes, hey, how you doing? <laughs> it's just like, nobody, <laughs> nobody knows what to say anymore. It's just insane what's happening here. It's like, ho-hum, another win at Mullet. You just, you're just going to win them all, aren't you? That's the way it's going to go here. That's don't what, even know what to say That's anymore. what I was I saying. Play. That's literally what I was saying on the watch along. Like, I just wake up every day expecting the Coyotes to win now. I don't know when that happened. I don't know where the switch flipped, but here we are. It's unreal. But the other thing that we said about this team, too, is that it's somebody different every night. And it wasn't Clayton Keller tonight. And usually he's the best player on the ice. And tonight it was somebody else's turn. And surprisingly enough, it was Travis's Boyd. Travis's Travis Boyd. Travis. I, we've talked a lot today. <laughs> it was Travis Boyd's turn. And it's. That's what's so impressive about this group is it's somebody different every night. And I, I happened to talk to Christian Fisher this morning at the morning skate, and he said, it is everything that you're hearing about this room, it is 100% true. He said that this group is tighter than any group of teammates he's ever played with. And it's, I, I that that's makes life fun. It's better to go to the rink and it's better to go to work when you like the people you work with. So, it's amazing what they're doing. I just don't want it's going to stop. Me All right. either. I got two more topics I want to talk about, and then we'll talk about Josh Tone, and then I'll leave and make you guys talk some more. Um, Ivan Prozvatov, second game since he's been up. Andre Turney tells us today, oh, he's going to be here the rest of the season, which is crazy, right? Because Tucson is in a playoff push. Now they have to do it without their number one goalie as well as, you know, whatever other call-ups. That's that's a tough situation for Tucson. It's going to make it really hard on them to make the playoffs. But the the thinking here, I think we talked about this a little bit, but I got a chance to chat with Bill a little more. Ivan Prozvatov is not waivers exempt next season. So if you bring him into camp, you got to waive him at some point if you want to send him back down to Tucson. And if you waive him, somebody can claim him. So they're getting a really good look at him right now to see what they have. I mean, it's it's not a lot of starts, right? They still have to juggle three goalies, and Andre admitted how difficult that's going to be. But they're trying to get a look at him to see whether they go with him, whether they ride him as one of their two goalies next season. And if that's the case, if they like what they see, if he, if he keeps doing what he's doing, who's the odd man out? What does that mean for Connor Ingram, who's also a restricted free agent, and Karel Vemelka, who's under contract? Do they try and move one of those guys? Really curious how this goaltending situation is going to play out. Yeah, but it goes back to the question that I asked earlier, and we've we've said how how well Connor Ingram has played of late. He's been outstanding, and it's you know, whoever has the ball, they play great. My question then goes: Why didn't they do this in November and December, and why the hell did they pick up Connor Ingram off of waivers when you maybe didn't need to? And that—that's the only thing. Like that, you've created a goalie conundrum that you didn't maybe need to create. I, I'm not saying that. Hey, they're in a great spot. All three of these guys are winning. But to your point, Craig, you can't keep all three because if you go into next season, let's say you sign Connor and you sign Prozvatov. You've got three goalies on a contract. Somebody's got to go down because you can't have three all season. You're going to lose one because yep. I think both Prozvatov and Ingram are attractive enough that somebody would pick them up. So it's it's an interesting thought process that I don't know if I completely follow. Yeah, two things come to mind there. Are they going to try and move one of them if they yeah. do like what they see from Ivan? And then the second thing is when you think about the points that a guy like Connor Ingram has earned them this year, what if you had just gone into the season as planned with John Gill Gillies as your backup, yep. where would this team be? Right now? They'd, they'd be more where Chicago is, right? And 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 but would that have? I mean, woulda, coulda, shoulda. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I, I wonder. I, I've always wondered about that picking Connor Ingram off the waivers. I've always wondered that. Not that he doesn't deserve to be in this league, because I think he clearly has proven he's a National Hockey League goaltender. I just don't know if he needed to prove that here with this team doing what he's done for this team this season. But you're right. Now they have a three-headed monster, and not only have they got it, they're carrying it through the rest of this season. Yep. And that's, by the way, that means not everybody's getting their work. So well, it's going to be interesting to see how they juggle this. you got a couple of back-to-backs left before the end of the season, so you know that that's going to be fair. But there's somebody sitting out 
Ingram yeah. was in street clothes tonight. Could be Karel Vamelkison in street clothes another night. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. It's an interesting situation. Yeah, and I wish Steve Pot fan luck down in yeah. Tucson because what a tough situation. Topic number two. Wait, you're moving oh. too fast. All right, I'm moving too fast. Go ahead. Um, we, Let's just give Prozatov his flowers for tonight because he was faced with a lot of shots. Save 29. Good for a 935 save percentage. Um, gets his second NHL win and his second start with the Coyotes this season. So we want to make sure he gets his flowers. And he's not our king, though. Oh. Um, this is Craig, Craig was just ready to talk topics. I know he was yeah. derailed. We're, we're not used because he joined. We're not used to soon. Craig coming in the first segment. So let's rewind and crown our king. It's Travis Boyd. Duh, Minnesota's very own. Yeah. Did you know he's from Minnesota? One PD some money tonight. By the way, yes, two goals. Um, so congrats to Travis Boyd for being two nights DraftKings king of the game. Craig, you really didn't miss out. Um, we all had bets out on this game. PD did really well. I did. O- Sean and I did okay. I thought I won one that I didn't actually win because I th- he only got twenty nine saves and I had twenty nine and a half. Oh, you need one more save. Yep. So I did get goal in the first ten, um, and I got what did else did I get? Yo, it's plus one and a half. Oh yeah, and yo, it's plus one and a half. PD got Boyd anytime. Michelli over half a point and Coyotes money line. And Sean got the money line. And Hayton over half a point. And um, Hayton over half a point. But somehow they could have. Jack McBain could have scored one empty net goal. I know. Had me perfect. It was so close. It was so close. But anyway, we had a lot of fun betting on the DraftKings Sportsbook app tonight. We also had a lot of fun drinking for Peeps. Yes. We both, all three of us were drinking Gold Golden Lager. Lager. And listen, Craig, we felt sorry because we were reclined in the, the more furniture recliners drinking for Peaks, and you were a. Uh, Hard at work at the arena since five o'clock. So um, it's good for us. But Four Peaks, grab it, especially tomorrow, St. Patty's Day. If you didn't get the elusive invite to Craig's party, the other best place to send St. Patty's Day is at the Four Peaks A Street Pub. So hang out there. Enjoy a damn good time. You must be 21 or older to enjoy responsibly. And if you want to experience the mullet magic for yourself, Head to the Game Time app. Save up to 60% on your tickets when you buy last minute. John Mayer's here April 5th. I am waiting until that day to buy the tickets. It's very stress-inducing for me, but I'm going to do it because I know it works. So the best way to support us is by buying your tickets through the link in our description. So check it out. Okay, Craig, you may proceed. Well, I need to say something more about Four Peaks. Okay. Just don't feel sorry for me because I think I have eight cases at my house now. Oh. So I should actually not feel sorry. I should be excited because I'm going to your party tomorrow. Do not bring beer. Please do not bring beer. I have nowhere to put it. Okay. I need people to drink beer, but not, you know, drink responsibly. Of course. I'm also going to say this right now because I know there's a game tomorrow, a very important game, with the one Pac-12 team from the state of Arizona that's still standing. Wow. Damn straight. Wow. Too soon. I know there's a game. I know you got to work, Sean. I know Totri has to work. I know Shane has to work. I think Dame is producing it. But I'm just saying, the party will still be going. And if you don't show up, I'm going to be pretty disappointed. Okay, so the expectation is for me to drive out there after. So after instead of Sean Bye. hosting the pregame, he's hosting the after party yes. at Crack. You guys, you got to you guys got to bring the late night energy to revive the party when you show up. So whatever uh, it is, like drink, drink. What time is the tip off? It depends on the it depends on the result in the What's game. What's the tip off? Seven. Seven. Oh shit! I'll Oof. be halfway home by seven. Well, we so it starts at seven. I'll, I'll crash at about ten to seven. How late are you expecting this party to go, Craig? I'm expecting it to go pretty late, much later than Petey will stay. Okay. <laughs> now, we'll Noted. Let's get into one, eh? First in, first out, just like you, Vay. Let's definitely get into one. So. After, after the Devils win tomorrow, you, you guys can come on over on mass, just carpool it on over, and we'll be waiting, and there will be plenty of beer. Love what it. about the food? That's what I'm worried about. We'll there save some. Be, we'll make you a plate. Be, you, t- you have not met my wife. She'll yeah. have to go boxes for you, buddy. Say less. There will uh, be food. Okay. <laughs> um, $2 Super Chat from Ruler14. Someone give me the playoff odds. Oh, boy. We're hot. I don't think I don't think they're making the playoffs, but listen, you're not far off. You're not far off. So... Imagine All right, if Craig. Done anything on the road where this team would be right now. Anyway, that leads me to my next topic. Should, and I want I want people to comment in the chat on this one too. Like, I want them to be realistic. I want them to be objective. 
Should Andre Turigny be top five for Jack Adams this year? What he's doing here, especially if they sustain this. What if they win like they have eight more games here? What if they win five or six more at home? Should Andre Turigny be a Jack Adams award candidate? It's hard because win it, but should he be like top five? It's hard because you look at you look at the standings and you look at some of the top teams and maybe teams that you didn't expect. So, like you look at you know. Boston, you look at even New Jersey, what they've accomplished this year. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'll I'll go a step further, without a doubt. And I'm not even wavering in the least, and I'll tell you why. Because before the season started, this team was said analytically to be the worst team ever built in the cap era. And that was based on purely analytics, worst team ever on paper. True, Craig? The true story. True. So true story. You say that, and what they've done, they're going to have the best home record here in over a decade. since, And they might <laughs> surpass 2012's home record. They might. Like, that's they how well they're playing. Will. They might go back to they're, 2009-10. They're three away from tying it. They're three away from tying it with eight games to go at home. So what he has done with this group of players, when you look at the roster, now is even less than it was when the season started. I mean, I I like Laurent Defan and Boko Omama and... And Victor Soderstrom, I like those players, but they're all American League players two weeks ago. It, what they're doing is absolutely phenomenal. It's unheard of, and I know there's coaches. you got to go to, like Leah said, Boston, and maybe you throw in Dallas. Even what Hackstall's doing in Seattle, they might be a playoff team this year. So he really won't be in a top three candidate for a team that's that far out of the playoffs. But he should be a top five guy, and he's got to be come across people's desks and go, that name's got to come across and go, yeah. Same with Michelli. For Calder. For and, Calder. And something else we need to bring up, Clayton Keller for Masterton. Yeah. Because yeah. what... We need to get that out in what, the universe. Yeah, like we haven't talked about that at all. Like what he's done this season, what he's overcome, that gruesome that leg injury? injury, and not only come back in good health, but come back and had his yep. best season ever. Yeah. Um, so there's three Coyotes at least worthy of earning votes in some top awards. And we'll get into more of that as, this, as we get closer to the end of the season. And it's been dive deeper into all those subjects and, and reasons why. Yeah. I just, I, I, you mentioned some of the factors with Andre, but look at the blue line. Look at the blue line they're rolling out right now. Is there a player on this blue line that anyone would say is a top pair defenseman? No, I can say that definitively. How many players on this blue line would be considered second pair defensemen? Maybe J.J. Mosier? Maybe J.J. Mosier? Everybody else is considered, if you if you ask around the league, they're either a third pair guy or they're an extra guy. Or, or an American cool. leaguer, Craig. Or an American leaguer. That's what they're rolling out right now. Yeah, and that's all of them. That's all of them that are here on roster right now today. 100% agree with you. I think... When you asked the question, like, should he? I was thinking, will he? And I think, like, laughing, will he's laughing in the chat put it best. Like, the should, does he deserve it? Yes. Well, then the East Coast bias, sorry, the Sun Show is screaming. It's yeah. very distracting. Um, will, will the East Coast bias allow for that? I don't know. Yeah, of course not. But I will say, you convinced me. I'm still on the verge, maybe, like... Fifth or sixth. I don't know. I just don't yeah, think. No, he's not top three. And I'll tell you why. I'm not saying playoffs. top three. But you got to make the playoffs. Yeah. Period. To win the job. Yeah. yeah. Agreed that. Agreed with that. But, but but for what he has done here is absolutely exceptional and special. And honestly, two or three different players in this mix. And everybody stays healthy all year. Honestly, and I, who knows where this team would have been right now. No. And, and listen, I think this is getting some national steam, too. I've heard. Elliot Friedman and Jeff Merrick talking about it. I've heard guys at the Athletic talking about it. I think there's some steam to this. I don't know. They got to sustain this, right? Like if yeah. they, they if they end up losing like eight of their last ten or something, nobody's going to vote for him. But if they win like 24 games at home, he's going to be top five for me. Yeah, I can that'll be. That. And that puts you top five in the Western Conference at home wins. Probably top three. Probably. Like he'll have, they will, I, I'm going to go out on a limb here. They will have a better home record than Western Conference teams that make the playoffs. No question. No question. By That's the way, speak, speaking of, can anybody like name a defenseman on the Coyotes? Um, Luke said Nemeth led the team in ice time wow. tonight. Like, and, what? And, and there's a guy, and I'll be honest to Pat, Patrick Nemeth, and I apologize for the statement. 
when we talked about Patrick Nemeth in the fall, we said he's going to be a seventh defenseman on this team. In the preseason show, we said he's a guy that's going to be in and out of the lineup. He led the team in ice time tonight. Like, come on. <laughs> really? And they won? Yeah. Anyway. It's not wanna... Bo Byram. It's not Kale McCarr. It's Patrick Nemeth. Yes. Or Nemo, as Andre called Is it Nemo? Ne- Nemo, yes. Okay. Uh, Finding Nemo. I don't want to step on your toes, Lee. I don't, I don't, you know, I know I'm No, wrong. you're leading. You're hosting now. Go on. So should I talk about the last topic? Should we talk about Josh Stone? Yeah, let's talk sure. about Josh Stone. Let's talk about Josh Stone, who signed his three-year ELC. Uh, he's actually on an ATO in Tucson for the rest of the season, so the ELC doesn't kick in until next season. He cannot come up to the Coyotes this year, but he is AHL playoff. He's playoff eligible for the AHL, and he'll, he'll compete for Tucson for the rest of the season. Um, PD, and you and I talked about this a little bit at the ice then today at the morning skate about the decision itself and, and all that goes into this. And I know there are a lot of people out on Twitter saying, oh, either great for him, it's time for him to move on, or this was a bad decision, he needed one more year of college. Well, of course, none of us knows. We'll, we'll find out. There is some feeling in the Coyotes development staff, and I wrote about this in the last prospect report in which I featured him, that of course he needs to get bigger and stronger, which prospect doesn't. But Josh has to work on his skating, and they want to see him drive play a little bit more. They thought maybe he could have done that in another year in college, but there's also the belief that if the development staff can get its hands on them, and we're talking about you know a very complete development staff, again, the most complete development staff this franchise has ever had, you get him down with Potts, who had him in the junior Coyotes, crazy enough, and now is going to coach him again. You get him with Lars Hepso, their, their skating coach. You get him with Kyle Bocek, their skills coach. And then you get that the, the other development guys, Lee Stempniak, talking to him on a daily basis. Uh, I'm, sorry, I'm forgetting guys with Jeff Shantz, uh, Nathaniel Brooks. Those guys are going to get their hands on him while the guys that focus on the forwards. There's a lot of people, and Bill said it best today when we were talking to him about this. He said, when, when we draft guys, I think you 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 understand now with what the way we're doing things, they get a lot of attention, and that's what's going to happen with Josh now. And he's only 21, so he gets a three-year ELC. I, I don't know that that mattered to the Dones so much, but if you turn 22, you can only get a two-year ELC once you reach the, the age of 22. So he just felt like with talking to the people that he talked to, and he talked to a lot, including Nathan Smith down there who said, I wish I had left earlier, um, when he, when he talked to that glut of people, he came to the decision eventually after changing his mind like eight times that it was time to turn pro. Wait, one of the things I want to say, because I, I had more time to think about it when we talked about it outside the ice end this morning. In his particular case right now, it's time to leave. And I'll tell you why. The last time I begged for this team to keep a kid in college was with Kyle Turris. Big difference with what Kyle Turris was because the expectations on bringing Kyle Turris from college to the NHL were he's going to the NHL. There was no conversation at all about Kyle Turris going to the American league and developing and learning and going through the hard knocks on bus rides. There is with Josh Doan. So his ability to go learn professional hockey in the American league with hands on -on one-on-one attention from several departments makes this to me, this is the right place for him at the right time. And hey, let's face it, going to school and playing hockey is hard. It's hard. And we, we, you know, college athletes in the NCAA, whether it's football, basketball, hockey, I don't care. You got to go to school. You got to keep your grades up and you don't, you cannot give 100% to your sport. You can't because. And he was a captain too. And school is important, Craig. I think school is important. And I want kids to, that are in NCAA, I want them to focus on their education and get a good education. Josh Stone's going to be a professional hockey player. He just is. Like if, if I'm going to school to be an engineer and I get a call and they say, hey, you can join th- this company making a living tomorrow as an engineer, we go. That's what you're going to college for. He went to college to be a pro hockey player. He is now a pro hockey player. Mission accomplished. Yeah. He's going to get great attention. He's going to get great development. He's in the right place for Josh Stone. You know what else is different about him from Kyle Turris? He's a hell of a lot more mature. He will make the right decisions. He's just, yeah. he's such a character. He's thoughtful. You no, know, yep. there's, there's literally no concern whatsoever that he's going to go to the AHL and sulk. He's going to work his ass off because yeah. that's how yeah. he was taught because he's got two of the best damn parents on the planet. He is just a solid, solid kid in every way, character-wise. 
He's going to work. He's going to listen. He's going to be a great teammate. He's going to be very coachable. So, I mean, that part of it for Josh, I, I don't know how he will handle the AHL level of play yet, but all those other parts that he just talked about, I have no question about Josh Dill. Yeah, I think when I first heard the decision, I was like upset, but I, my upset reaction was coming from the ASU side where I just feel like it's a huge loss for their program. I mean, to have the Doan name at, at that program, he was the captain, like you said. He scored the first and last goal at Mullet this season, the first ever goal at Mullet. Um, just, just I, I was more focused on that, but after hearing you guys talk about everything that he can gain – from being in Tucson and I appreciate the fact and I hope that with this development staff and with this management that they don't rush him especially you know he's a second round pick he's not that first round pick I just hope that everybody here maybe in our chat doesn't expect him to be in a Kachina next season or maybe even the season after have some patience I think the AHL is going to be a really great situation for him um, and hopefully it turns him into the player the Coyotes want him to be and the reason why they drafted him um, in a few years, and we can have in maybe a few years' time another Doan on the Coyotes. Yeah, and I'm glad you brought up the ASU angle because it's something we shouldn't ignore. This is a blow for the yeah. Sun Devils. They don't, they aren't getting this level of recruit. Let, let's be honest, they're not getting this level of recruit. Uh, they got a couple guys through the transfer portal, but they're not getting these guys who come into the program as freshmen, and they need to if they're going to take that next step. Losing Josh Doan and not having that drawing card, Greg Powers and his staff have their work cut out for him this summer because that was a piece that through most of this season, Greg Powers assumed would be back, and now he's not going to be back. So that's a really big blow for ASU. Yep. Any final thoughts on Josh or... No, I'm excited to see his development, and and I and we, we are. This makes the playoff run down there even more important. And we talked about the Prosvitov angle, and I saw someone in the chat say, "Who's playing goal down there now?" Do you want to know? Tyler Parks. Who? Tyler Parks, 30 year old Tyler Parks that had six AHL games to his resume yep. as a 30 year old prior to this year with Tucson. He has now played 10 games, six AHL games prior to this, and he's 30. And David Tendek, who we talked about a lot in this organization, who's been a guy that they drafted in the sixth round years and years ago. He has a total of how many HL games? Five. And that's as of today, he has five. So they've got a guy's combined 21 <laughs> games of AHL experience carrying the load. One is 30 and the other one is 23. And that's who the tandem is that has to carry them into the playoffs. And right they're now. fighting for it. They're still in that seventh spot they're in, in the, the seventh Pacific. Spot and they're fighting for it right now. And this is tough. So we'll yep. see if the Josh only Dillon one point can help ahead him. of San Jose. Yep, things are tight down there right now. Big yeah, games this tough, weekend. Tough Big games yes, against Calgary. Games. Get down, get down the I ten. They're they're at home this yeah. weekend and they're at home and, next week. So make yeah. a, make Josh, a trip out of it. And Josh Dillon will be on the ice. So. There you go. And there you go. Oh, and one last yeah. thing on Josh Dillon. I, I did ask his dad today, and I happen to see the equipment who's manager. His, who's his dad again? Yeah, it's Josh Dillon's dad from here on yeah. out. What's his name? So I did ask him and the Coyotes equipment manager, Stan Wilson, if the new Coyote player would be wearing number 19. And what do you think the answer was? No. Stan, you know, Stan, Stan's a pretty, he'll tell you what, he just looked at me, shook his head, he goes, no. Like, what a stupid question. He will be, I, I, I believe, I wouldn't be surprised him see him carrying his college number 91 into the yeah well that's what the the, the jersey the they unveiled tonight was 91 yeah. so. so so 19 was off the table apparently i thought <laughs> yeah, maybe save shocked. money not save shocked. money on printing you got don 19 already in yeah the well gift richie shop. didn't do that here yeah richie should have yeah. stayed 12 and don 19 we just keep signing guys with the same last name never mind <laughs> all right all right craig well, anything else nope other than you gotta get home and plan for that party can't wait i will I will see you both at 7 p.m. And DP, I will see you at 11.30. Are you right. wearing green, Craig? If you say so. Do you have a leprechaun? <laughs> I'm not wearing green, no. I, Seriously? I, I, wait a minute. I don't know what has happened at home in terms of decorations. I'm guessing there's... You're not wearing Craig, green? You have to wear green. You have to wear green. I'm not Irish. I'm not wearing green. I, I was like expecting a leprechaun yeah, costume. Yeah, I was thinking he was going to go... The, not, not that I'm far, but you. I thought he was going to wear at least something. I'm pinching, well, yeah, like Craig. green suit? Something, buddy. I'm wearing green. I got gray quarter zip or something. That's what I was envisioning. 
All right. I'll, I'll look at my wardrobe and see. Okay. Okay. Yeah. With the shock and disbelief yeah, on I know, all just, of our faces. We talked about the goddamn thing for four months. And he's not wearing green? Are you out of your I mind? Do, I do have a hat. I have a special I hat. I have a green I hat. hat. Buddy, that's such oh. a lame. I have a green hat. Let's like I'm wearing green socks. You have not seen the hat. Okay. Well, I can't wait. I'll be there seven. 6.59, I'll be knocking on the door. Okay, I'll answer <laughs> at seven. Okay. <laughs> All right. Bye, Craig. See you, See you tomorrow. Can't wait. Oh, man. Looking forward to that. Yes. What are you going to bring? He said he doesn't want beer. Maybe we should stop at Circle K for some snacks. Sure. Get the snack. Tray. And that's the other thing we talked about. The sons are here, and they get the Circle K snack tray. I know. It's okay. No, we don't. We, we don't, don't need it. it. I've okay. already eaten enough off We've the snack cart today. Yeah. I, DP was ready to confiscate. I ate the kettle cooked jalapeno chips. Uh, that's probably not my. Oh, it was so yeah, good. Yeah, I'm not a jalapeno chip. What did guy. you have? I went um, salt and pepper again. And Sean had the salt and vinegar I during the intermission See, of the, the salt and, I, I I like the salt and vinegar. It's got a little bit of a twang to yeah. it. Yeah. The salt and pepper is my jam. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I know you also liked the orange slices too. <sighs> like it. A, literally addicted to those yeah. things. They, oh. And listen, to make this freaking trek out no to Craig's house, either, but... I'm gonna need to fill up my tank with some gas. So oh, yeah. I better take out my phone right now and text three one three one zero three one three one zero to uh, take PHNX. To get three... the, wait, you know how far away his house is from my house. By the way, that's two tanks there, of gas. There was an unreal tweet today, and I'm sorry I forgot who tweeted it. Um, but it was hilarious because Boko Mama keeps getting called up a sign, called yes. up a sign, called up a sign. He needs a and gift card. And someone said Boko Mama needs to win the $500 gas gift card. 100%. And you're so right. So Boko, I know Boko, you're listening. Boko three one. Text P H N X to three one three one zero. Three one to three one. win a $500 gas card. Yes. Um, we're super excited to partner with Circle K. Text PHNX to that number. You won't regret it. See the show notes for Please. details. Yes, the peach rings peach are elite. Drinks. Sean and I were eating those the other day. They were having They're the best peach rings on the planet. Like sometimes candy gets a little, the gummy bears, like sometimes gummy bears get a little too firm. Like I'm not going to name names, but Haribo. Um, <laughs> they don't, not as terrible. Okay, they're nice and chewy. Like gummy bears like, should be. I'm telling you, the texture is elite. It, it genuinely, it genuinely is like my favorite peach rings that I've had because so, so far, some of them are too firm. These are nice yes, and chewy. You the need way they the, should you, be. you don't want to hurt your teeth. Exactly, it shouldn't it, be a workout. It shouldn't be effort. Yeah. Listen, it's hard to nail. Oh. It's hard to nail a gummy, but you know who does? It's OGs. OGs, does. OGs um, because not gummy. only do they have THC or CBD infused gummies, they make them delicious. Um, unreal flavors, orange creamsicle, blackberries and cream, strawberries and clean cream. That one's on the shelves now. A happy balance gummy. It's a one-to-one -one CBD THC ratio. Um, they got sleep gummies. They got microdose gummies. I don't know. Maybe Sean, the late, the Sun Devils crew can bring a bag of OGs out to the St. Patty's Day party for the after party. Do, do, do you remember when OGs came to the golf event? To the tea party? Yes. Yeah. And they have, so what is a microdose? Because they have the halves, they have the minis. Isn't it three? So minutes? the microdose is three milligrams. Uh, okay, so the smaller the, ones. The smaller ones are three milligrams. The full size ones are ten okay. milligrams. So yeah, so the microdose are the smaller ones. The, yes. So for the you're not experienced in this, that's the way to go. And I talked to the the guys at OGs for a long time, and for me, that was the path to take. Yep. So, so check them got, out. By the way, those people at OGs, they know everything. Yeah. They're and also the kindest people ever. It might have Very something true. to do with them being hot all the time, but they are <laughs> might be nice. a little bit high. Very true. That's okay. Very true. Uh, okay. So as always, you can find them at your local dispensary by checking out ogsbrands.com. Must be 21 or older to enjoy. All right. We got thrown off by Craig calling in when he did it. Yes. So I just want to wrap up a few more game-related things. Okay. Um, first of all, we need to give Lawson Cross a shout-out for his 22nd goal of the season. Uh, it was a great shot. Unreal play, and if you're watching the watch long, PD literally called this play seconds before it happened, and it happened. Michelli got his 30-second assist of the season on that goal, so we want to give Lawson Kraus his flowers. Anybody else we didn't shout out or any other before? And we will go over the keys, so don't think I forgot. I know, I, I any other small... We went to the keys early we in did the, the watch long. We did the keys in the watch long. Should we just do it now? Sure. Let's pull up the keys. Um, yes, and I'll go through them quick. I so did do it on the watch line. No transition. Canucks, they, they did a very good job. There was a late turnover by Keller in the third period that I thought was going to turn into an odd man rush. It didn't. So that's ding. They hit that one. Stop KHL. Kuzmenko, undrafted, 27 year old, 
is absolutely elite. Gets the first goal of the game, so that's half. We'll give them half because they kept it quiet after that. Get to the net. They're 31st in goals against, and you saw two of those are bad goals. I'm sorry, Demko, and I know Thatcher Demko is probably listening on his way to the airport. Two of those goals he has to have. Clearly a ding. That's two and a half dings, which means... A Coyotes win. Coyotes win. Coyotes win. Yay. Two and a half is a win. Woo. Ooh. Anything else from this game? Um, I, I, it, It's just amazing to watch this team that it's someone different all the time and how it's hard crazy. they work and how fun they are to watch at the mullet. And I texted the head coach of the Vancouver Canucks today, Rick Tockett. And I said, look out for this team because they're really good did he at text home. Back? He did. Oh. I won't say what he okay. said, but they're <laughs> very good. I said they're very good at home. You can't, there's too many teams that get surprised by this team. And exactly what happens by the third period, you go, oh shit, we're behind. Yeah. And then they push toward and then it's too late. And it happened again. Yep. Very this team cool. is magic at the mullet. Magic at it's the real. mullet. And Vancouver will be back for the final game of the season um, here at Mullet on April 13th. So. Did, did we say something about OEL? You forgot to add. Say something nice to about. I don't know. He was. List. He didn't play though. Didn't play. He's, he's on the IR. He's not even here. He's, he's yeah. home. But we'll if, say something maybe, nice. Hopefully, he'll be back. He's a nice kid. April thirteenth. Big away all fan. Big part of the twenty twelve crew. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Cool. That's something um, nice. Yeah. All right. Well, let's take a look at the upcoming schedule because PD, thank goodness, the Coyotes are finally hitting the road, um, but not before the Blackhawks come to play at Mullet. Oi. Oi. Don't feel good about that one being a loss um but then it's on to winnipeg edmonton and colorado on the road next week including winnipeg edmonton as a back-to-back -back that's tough. tough that's tough and, and there's a couple of reasons that's tough one they're the three road teams are all three playoff teams so that makes one that's hard the back-to-back -back, winnipeg to edmonton it's not like flying from phoenix to la no like edmonton to winnipeg's a long hike and by the way the edmonton airport is the farthest rank to airport distance in the national hockey That's league tough so it, it is nearly an hour <gasps> once you land and they're going to get there very late so that game that you're you're in one but they're you're, going back a time zone at yeah least. you're still in one yeah that's hard that's a late one i don't know against Connor mcdavid you might want to look at Connor in the over on the 22nd and they haven't played as well on the road so for them to come out of here with points in uh in the three games i think is going to be a stretch i think these are going to be really hard games i think the chicago game I, I i hate to say this for a team that was supposed to be competing with chicago this might be a trap game you might be looking by it because you go to that road trip so okay it, it could be a closer game than people might realize all right I, coyotes I like in it. a trap game i can't believe i'm even using those words can't believe it i can't believe it either <sighs> what a team what a team what a freaking team um well let's cap it off by looking at the punch card and i think charles said it earlier this is the first line of the punch card all season that they've gotten more than four wins it's fine so five one green two stars. three four five six seven this is the eighth line of the punch card and it's the first line they got more five. than four wins that's it's amazing unreal and i still think there could be more and by the way somebody had suggested that next season we should do a different color for an overtime or a oh, shootout loss okay because i think that would help us paint a good picture of okay of points as long as i don't have to do it no but sean will the do it as his one secret noted. that no one else knows how to do i know the graphic designers secret. on it by the way still phenomenal graphic i just love it every time i watch it so i can't wait to see what he comes up for next season i don't want to think about next season yet mm -hmm. Let's get through this one. Yeah, <laughs> let's get through let's this one. Let's see the ping pong balls fall where they may. And let's go from there. <sighs> that is a huge sigh for everybody. And by the way, ain't no chance in hell DP showing up at 1130 after the ASU. You don't think? Like hell no. It depends. If it's a win, I could I'd show up just whatever. Yeah, I maybe. After a win... You guys might feel electric, and we're halfway there already. Yeah, I mean, especially because if they won, they would officially have gone further in the tournament than the University of Arizona Wildcats. They already have more wins in the tournament than the University of Arizona Wildcats, but if they and won in, West in the round of 64, which, if, in case you missed, the University of Arizona Wildcats failed to do earlier today, playing a bunch of nerds in the Princeton Tigers, um, if Arizona State can win, they will have gone That's farther than the Arizona Wildcats. I had them in my Final Four. All I right. had them losing next round to Mizzou because I knew they were frauds. I just didn't think they were this big of frauds. That's a little aggressive. All right. So the next PH next tea party is tea party. on the 24th. That's Phenomenal next fun. Friday already. Phenomenal fun. Um, we had a blast last time. And yes, 
OG's had samples, non-medicated samples, but if you want to try the amazing Yeah, there's all, all, all of our sponsors yeah, show up. Yeah, the amazing food, food amazing drinks. time, the golf, incredible. The, yep. the, the putting contest putting was contest, elite. The half court shot contest. There's just a lot of fun. I didn't do the half court shot contest. That's too, that was hard. So, so join. It's a lot of fun. Friday, March 24th. Golf, food, drinks, contest, prizes, and more. The PHNX crew will be there. What Suns fans will be there. What, what are they watching? The s- they are watching the Suns take on the Sacramento Kings. There you go. Um, so check the link in the show notes to reserve your spot today. And diehards, check Discord for your exclusive discount link. And listen, become a diehard at gophnx.com because Craig not only has unbelievable diehard only content on there, um, there's a ton of free and unlock content as well, mm-hmm. which you should 100% check out, including his story that he updated this evening with quotes from Josh Doan. So if you read it this morning, go back and reread it because it's way updated and longer and full of more information. Um, but becoming a diehard also gets you access to our Discord, which is a lot of fun and gets you 20% off on merchandise and events such as the tea party, such as these shirts well, we got that we're merch wearing. On. We're rocking merch. And I'm I just saying you might want to become a diehard. Because in when case you, the coyotes come out with any more shirts. Oh. Hmm. hmm. Just saying. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know if hmm. they did Karen hear that? Hmm. hmm. And yes, hmm. the coyotes do have a game next Friday, so we won't, we be, won't be at the tea party, but it doesn't mean you shouldn't go because everyone there's else will be there and it's so much fun. We had so much fun. Can I say one more thing about the diehard thing? So you get a free shirt. Like there's a lot of things you get a free shirt. Yeah, you get a free shirt or hat when you sign up. But what happens when you Get your anniversary and you sign up the next year. You get year. another free shirt. Another free or hat. There is nobody that does that. No. Nope. Every year you get another free shirt or hat. Electric. Love it. Yep. Love and it. I do. I have a lot of PHNX stuff. I do. Me too. I have a stack in my closet. And I really have a spot in my closet for a new hockey shirt. So it would be. Mm. Mm. I do have a new closet in my new house. Mm. All right. Well, I this has been it. fun, everybody. Hit the like button, by the way. I know there's more than 26 of you watching. Um, everybody who was with us in the watch along and then came over here, everyone who was just here on the post game show, everybody who's listening later, we appreciate you all so much. Be yeah. sure to subscribe to the PHNX Sports YouTube channel. We're hoping to do more of those. I believe Sun Devils will do a watch along tomorrow, tomorrow. night. Um, their watch alongs are hysterical. Yes. Same thing, though. If you're watching the ASU game tomorrow night, Grab out your iPad, your phone, your laptop. Watch the ASU Sun Devil show at the same time. And so it's, fun. It's so much fun. You're sitting, it's like sitting at the bar with your friends. So do it. I'm a huge fan of this whole thing. Yeah, I, we had so much fun. Hopefully we'll tonight. do it again at least one more time before the season ends. Yes. Um, and just and more to come. Just tons more to come. And we're still live all summer long, five days a week. So subscribe to YouTube. Follow everybody on Twitter. You can follow PD at S. Peters Hockey. Follow me. At Leah Merrill, follow Sean at Sean underscore to pause. Follow the, sh- did I say follow Craig? Follow Craig at Craig S. Morgan. Everybody follows Craig. And follow the show at PHNX underscore coyotes. Everybody enjoy the rest of your night. Take care of yourselves. And we'll talk to everybody soon.